All right, folks, about ready to get started? So we're going to uh, swap classes around. Uh, I'd said in the initial outline uh, that we're going to talk about uh, IBM Bluemix this week, uh, and uh, then next week go into uh, CSS uh, and some UI frameworks. Uh, decided that was uh, actually uh, the wrong order, uh, that uh, while we're making some progress on HTML and getting things up on the uh, page, we ought to stick with HTML. Uh, so we're going to talk about CSS and UI frameworks this week. Uh, and uh, then next week we'll uh, go into uh, yeah, to Bluemix and start talking about back-end services. So what I wanted to do today uh, was a few things. A bit of a review of GitHub. I've been getting a lot more GitHub questions than uh, it, it are, uh, I was hoping for at this point in the class. Uh, and it uh, seems like people are still kind of feeling out GitHub. Uh, we're also going to uh, be uh, talking about uh, another function of GitHub, uh, uh, GitHub branches uh, that we haven't uh, gone through yet. Uh, we'll use branches a lot throughout this course uh, after uh, today because we'll use it as our primary collaboration uh, mechanism. Uh, but uh, for right now, we're going to use it uh, to uh, talk about GitHub pages. Hey, excuse me, guys. Can you keep it on that? Thanks. Um, so uh, we're going to use it uh, as uh, our way today of uh, creating things on uh, GitHub pages. Uh, basically, uh, I previously told you on GitHub pages uh, to uh, uh, do the, uh, the style where you have one page per repo or per uh, your uh, GitHub user. Uh, um, that's called a uh, personal page. There's a project page uh, option as well where you create a branch. Uh, uh, and uh, that allows you to create uh, as many GitHub pages pages as you want uh, off of uh, one off of each repository. Uh, we'll go into that when we get into GitHub anyways. Uh, then we're going to talk about CSS or cascading style sheets. Uh, this is kind of the uh, way of making your pages look right. Uh, Flexbox is a way of uh, uh, yeah, working uh, yeah, with uh, cascading style sheets uh, and uh, positioning things on the screen. Uh, and then we'll uh, be looking a little bit at Bootstrap, which is a framework uh, for uh, putting sets of CSS pages together uh, to uh, make them behave like you, uh, you want them to. Um, before we do that, though, there are a couple things I wanted to uh, touch base uh, on. Uh, uh, the first is the reminder of how to get elements from JavaScript. Uh, we've been using uh, get enter HTML uh, for a number of things in here, uh, and uh, they, uh, most people are getting this okay, but I still uh, keep getting a couple questions uh, on uh, how do I uh, get uh, uh, something off the page. And if my clicks actually act as clicks. There we go. Oh. I didn't actually need you in the window with all of my other million things. There we go. So um, basically, uh, we've got HTML and uh, JavaScript. Uh, and uh, I'm going to just kind of step back and uh, recap a couple things from last week, because I'm still getting questions about how the two, uh, the two differ. Uh, and uh, in particular, I think I'm still getting a lot of those questions uh, because people are putting uh, the, uh, well, that's horrible. Why is that so horrible? Sorry, pause. Huh. Text is illegible. Mm, can't expand it too much. Uh, it's already to the appropriate. Uh, it's really a color brightness thing. Is there a controller for it somewhere? That uh, I don't Because it seems almost like a brightness thing as compared to. Uh...
That is disappointing in that I have an awful lot of bits of code to show today, and uh, that's not terribly really visible. Huh. I wonder if I. Uh, do something horrifying like uh, accessibility uh, high contrast mode. My prediction is this looks absolutely horrible. Oh, it actually looks kind of better than the other one, didn't it? Oh, well, that didn't help. No, apparently high contrast mode does not affect the web pages. Good. Okay. Um, have completely lost my train of thought uh, before the projector uh, interruptions. Uh, um, was talking about uh, how you make the link between the uh, the web page and the JavaScript, which is still uh, I'm getting some questions on. Uh, um, and uh, in part, I think I'm getting uh, questions about the difference between HTML and JavaScript because a lot of you are uh, still uh, including your JavaScript up in the uh, HTML uh, page. Uh, now, uh, in uh, JS Fiddle and actually everywhere, if you just have little bits of JavaScript, you can include them in the HTML by using the script tag. But it's really not HTML. Uh, and in anything uh, of any greater size or greater complexity, uh, you want to put it in its own .js file uh, and then just call that from the uh, HTML page rather than having it embedded. So with this uh, a text, for instance, uh, I could have uh, put uh, a, a bit of uh, JavaScript up in here uh, using uh, a script uh, um, and uh, then putting whatever script I wanted to, uh, to write uh, in, uh, in there. Um, alert. Let's just uh, throw up an alert box. 
And when I run that, uh, it's going to uh, throw up my alert box. Now, of course, we'd uh, be totally familiar with that uh, if it showed up down here in the JavaScript, but the fact I can uh, include the same JavaScript here in the script tag uh, really just serves to confuse the uh, picture between what's JavaScript and what's HTML. Anything that is executable, anything that is code is JavaScript, uh, and anything that is just display uh, is HTML. And uh, so the button uh, here, for instance, uh, is, uh, is HTML. But it's calling my JavaScript function, which I'm declaring here on my JavaScript side. So when I click that, uh, what it's going to do is uh, it call the function document get element by ID para one, which is what I named that uh, place that some text is, uh, get the inner HTML and change that to hello. So I'm going to click it now, and it will say hello. And so basically, that shows uh, how you uh, go back to affect the page uh, by something that happens in your script. Uh, got a lot of questions about this on uh, yeah, this week's homework, uh, in that I uh, had to extend that uh, just a little bit uh, to uh, use uh, a, a functions like uh, append child uh, and uh, a get child element, because uh, you're uh, doing what's called walking the document object model, um, or walking the DOM, when you're uh, yeah, trying to affect things that are in the, uh, the web page from your JavaScript. And that document object model uh, you can think of is uh, basically this uh, complex tree with all the objects that can be displayed on that uh, a, a web page uh, in a hierarchy. That you might have a uh, HTML page with a, a, a head underneath it and a body uh, underneath it, and that body will have a paragraph tag in it. Uh, you might have an unordered list uh, in that paragraph tag and then a list item. Uh, and so you've got uh, each of these are like nodes in a tree. Yeah. And so tree traversal uh, or traversing the DOM are basically some of the keywords you'd search for uh, on now uh, learning how to uh, write to the document object model or write to the web page from your JavaScript. Um, so a little bit of project one debrief. Uh, people basically uh, did, uh, did fairly well on this. Uh, I got a lot of variety of solutions, uh, ranging from a single liner uh, to uh, a 33 line solution uh, uh, and everything in between. Uh, this was uh, a yeah, fairly simple uh, task when it comes down to it, although I bet it took a lot of reading to figure out how it, how it came down to it. Uh, um, basically, yeah, when uh, Faye and Andy yeah, introduced arrays last week, uh, it's because the yeah, solution almost has to uh, use an array. I did plan a yeah, different path through this that did not use arrays, uh, and uh, yeah, Andy and Faye just kind of realized, wait a minute, it's going to be easier just to, uh, to walk through arrays and, uh, and show that way. And so let me uh, yeah, do a yeah, quick uh, yeah, thing in a fiddle here. Uh, let me create a new one. Yeah. Um, and so if I uh, were to uh, do my one-line version of this, uh, uh, I would, uh, and you kind of think backwards as you do this, that I want uh, at the end to display an alert box. And so I'll use that alert function uh, that uh, we talked about. Uh, and what do I want to have in my alert box? Uh, well, I want to have uh, the results of a prompt, which uh, is enter animals, and I don't want to just enter uh, or just output the animals, although I might do it that way to test it. Uh, so let me run it and say uh, dog cat. Dog cat, okay. It's getting close to how I want it, uh, but uh, I want to uh, actually uh, uh, say enter animals separated by commas. And let me put an enter or two so you can actually see what I'm doing. And so then the first thing I'm going to do is uh, say split. And I want to split on the comma. That's the, uh, the thing that I want to uh, cause my guess uh, split uh, here. And uh, so let's see what that does when I split on a comma. Dog cat. Dog cat. OK. And then I want to sort. Dog, cat, elephant, cat, dog, elephant. So that is basically the simplest the single line version of that uh, uh, that project. Uh, and uh, this doesn't do uh, 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 some of the uh, the fancy things in there. If you have spaces, uh, somebody was finding it has uh, uh, some errors that pop up here and there. Uh, 
uh, kind of ignore those. The instructions in the assignment uh, just ask for comma separated lists. So uh, if I wanted to get rid of those spaces, I could have trimmed it. Um, and uh, so uh, let's let's see if I can actually replicate that. Uh, dog, cat, elephant. Uh, yeah, so I have a space in there. If I wanted to, I probably could have uh, said uh, trim. Can't spell elephant today. Uh, oh, it didn't. So trim didn't actually work as I uh, expected. Uh, I'm sure in the string functions that uh, one can find a version of trim that would trim both trailing and uh, 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 leading spaces, though. Uh, and uh, so you can basically uh, just chain all of these uh, uh, functions together. Uh, so uh, Andy and Faye talked about functions. They talked about writing functions. Uh, 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 but uh, uh, chaining functions is kind of one step beyond that. Uh, and it basically just means that the output, every function has an input and an output. Uh, that the output of the function acts as the input to the next function in the chain. And uh, we talked in the very, very first class about uh, uh, functional programming versus object-oriented programming. Uh, and this is an absolute pattern of functional programming. Uh, uh, JavaScript has some elements of each. It's primarily an object-oriented programming language. Uh, but functional programming languages uh, just uh, live, eat, and breathe by these chains of functions uh, that uh, behave just this way. Um, so that's kind of the shortest, easiest way to think about it. Uh, and the way that this works is that uh, the alert takes a string uh, and uh, prompt uh, uh, spits back out a string, uh, ignore trim for a minute, uh, split uh, turns an uh, that string into an array, uh, and uh, then sort, uh, uh, sorts the array that split generates. And that pops it back up on screen. So anybody have uh, burning questions about project? Some of y'all solve this in very different ways, and that's just fine. Uh, I didn't uh, ask in the assignment to solve it one way or another particular way, uh, but that's kind of the uh, uh, the easiest to explain way that I thought I could uh, could walk through it. Okay. I'm not going to go into great detail on uh, a homework free solution right now. Uh, we can later if people are interested. Uh, um, I've got a, a, a student who has an extension on, uh, a, on homework uh, three, though. Uh, um, basically, uh, extensions can only be granted 48 hours before a due date. Uh, we talked about that in the first class. Uh, and uh, I uh, mentioned this, uh, at least in part, to uh, uh, encourage people uh, to start on things early. Uh, and uh, if you get stuck on something and ask a couple days beforehand, I'm really stuck. I need to research this. I have this in front of me. Uh, a few days before the due date, uh, I, I'm much, much more inclined to say, yeah, okay, great. Take a couple other extra days. Uh, get that off your plate. Give this some time. Uh, um, but uh, it, the couple days before the, uh, the due date, uh, it, it just not going to do extensions on things. Uh, um, I'm also uh, taking the approach uh, of uh, if people turn something in early, uh, I'll often give feedback on what was turned in early and allow people to resubmit. Uh, take full advantage of that, uh, that uh, if uh, you have a chance to get a bit of feedback and get uh, your grade up early and have more time to work on it with feedback, uh, uh, do it. Uh, so uh, submit early is a good thing all, all around. Um, I put in here, though, the uh, three things that uh, really needed uh, from a uh, document object model perspective to put things back up on the page. Uh, uh, document get element by ID, we talked about create element and append child are the way that you programmatically add things to a, 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 to a web page. And so that's uh, a, a, something that uh, you'll, uh, a, a lot of you have already done. Uh, some of you skip that uh, bit and uh, spit things back out in an alert box, and uh, uh, that's okay for right now. But when we come to actually wanting to uh, programmatically interact with web pages, uh, uh, these uh, functions that uh, interact with the DOM are going to become critical. So GitHub. Um, I'm not going to uh, spend much time on this page unless people want me to kind of go back from the start and cover uh, a, a basic GitHub uh, clone uh, and uh, add uh, yeah, commit push uh, commands. Uh, uh, anybody feel like that needs a, uh, a review? Or shall I just assume this stuff's working now? Review? No review? Yeah, review? Okay. Okay. A little review. Cool. So um, let me uh, do this uh, bit of review by uh, means of uh, creating a uh, new project that uh, then we'll uh, go and uh, use in just a minute here to uh, talk about GitHub pages. So um, let me go up to my, uh, oh, wow. My wolf looks crazy in high contrast mode. Cool. I kind of like him that way. 
I'm going to go up to github.com and move stuff out of the way so I can actually see stuff on github.com. Hey, why am I not? Go to my profile and repository, and I'm going to create a new repository. Boy, I hate not having space on my screen. And my new repository, I'm going to call this, I don't know, demo2. And this is a test. And I always initialize a repository with a readme, uh, just so it has something to clone. And I'll create a repository. And then I will copy that clone address and I'll pop over and oh, I don't have a uh, get dash window open so I'll open one thinking about it there we go and go into my untangling directory which is where I keep things and I'll say git clone and paste in that clone address so it's now going to create a directory called demo2, and uh, then I'll go into demo2, and uh, in here you can see I uh, just have that readme, and so let's say I want to uh, a, a create an HTML page, uh, so I'll uh, touch index.html, and uh, I'll uh, touch, uh, uh, you know what, I'm not actually even going to do any JS in this one for right now. Oh, you know, actually, maybe I will. Um, uh, let me... Uh, say uh, test.js, just so we can show how we include that in one of these pages. And uh, then I'm going to uh, say code dot. Uh, now that dot you've seen in a few places, uh, that is basically just saying uh, uh, everything in this directory at this point. Uh, if you're copying something and use a dot, it says uh, uh, name the same thing as uh, I, I copied from. Uh, a dot is something you basically put in as a wildcard character. Uh, but in this case, uh, uh, that code dot uh, is telling Visual Studio Code uh, to open everything that's in this directory. Yeah. And uh, so here in a uh, agonizing amount of time, since my computer is also streaming, truly agonizing amount of time. There we go. Um, it's going to pop this up, and uh, I'm going to not install a new version. I'm going to not bother with the readme. Uh, in my uh, index.html, uh, let me uh, just uh, put uh, a, uh, an HTML. Um, I'm going to uh, just put a blank uh, head uh, and uh, then a... Um, blank body... And in my uh, body, uh, I'm going to uh, put, uh, oh, I don't know, just a uh, h1, uh, oops, h1 that uh, reads hello. Um, and so just for my minimal one in a few minutes, we'll uh, show how to include the, uh, uh, the JS from in here. Uh, but uh, uh, let me uh, right now from in here do a git status. Yep, I've got an index.html and a test.js. Uh, a git add period to add all of them to my commit. Let me do a git status again to show you that. See, yeah, uh, they've gone from uh, untracked uh, to uh, changes to be committed. And then a git commit minus m. Always, always, always give it a message. Um, initial files. And then I can just push. Git push. So great, now they're up there uh, on my GitHub repository. Uh, that's the uh, initial steps of doing the uh, commit. Uh, now a lot of y'all I see uh, doing this just kind of once at the end of your development. Uh, I actually commit a lot. Um, when I, uh, some would argue too much, uh, uh, but, uh, uh, but every time I make a change of any substance at all, uh, I tend to commit and push it up there uh, and go through these three steps, git add, git commit, and git push. Uh, and the reason I do that uh, is that uh, when I'm actually on my uh, web page here, uh, uh, let me uh, look right now just at the one commit, uh, but I can pull up this uh, list of uh, uh, commits, uh, and if I want to know what I changed at any point in time, I can go back to that list and open up just that commit uh, and see a change list. Uh, 
And uh, so uh, this first change list is going to tell me line by line that I added the HTML, the head, the body, and that hello, uh, um, and that I added test.js, but there was no changes in that test.js. Uh, and what this means is that uh, uh, if I uh, mess something up, uh, if I uh, change something I didn't mean to, uh, I can always come back to my uh, commit, start from that point before I messed it up, uh, and keep on going on from there. Uh, and uh, so uh, anytime I'm doing something risky, I'm changing something that I might forget how to change back, uh, I commit and push it up there right away, because uh, then if I ever want to change back to that, I sit sitting there writing my commit history. And that's what I mean by uh, having a uh, good commit history uh, when uh, I assigned the, uh, a, a couple of points for that in the, uh, the project, uh, is that you've been doing this on a periodic basis uh, to uh, uh, just kind of keep uh, a, your development process going and keep track of where you are in that development process. Uh, and when you're doing something that turns into like a one-liner like uh, we looked at today, uh, or uh, uh, even a 10 or 15-liner, uh, you can probably remember what you changed in your head. Uh, but when you've got 10,000 lines of code uh, across 100 different files and you're trying to keep track of what you changed, it's just impossible. And so this is where a git commit history becomes really, really critical. It also becomes critical if you're working on a project with somebody else because they'll change something and you uh, won't have any way of knowing what they changed except for by looking at a very granular commit history uh, and being able to infer it from that. So commit histories are good things. Um, I wanted to, though, get this demo too, uh, to appear uh, in uh, the um, GitHub pages. And so, uh, We've got to, uh, before we do that, talk about branches. Uh, a GitHub branch uh, is basically uh, an offshoot of your, uh, your repository. So uh, your GitHub repository keeps a uh, set of code uh, that uh, is code for a project that you're working on, uh, and uh, uh, that code can uh, exist in a number of different forms. Uh, I said that if I'm doing something risky, I'll often commit right before. And if it's a small project or just mine, that's probably what I'll do. If it's a bigger change, let's say not just changing a couple of lines in this file, but I've got to pull in two more plugins. I've got to add 20 files to to this. And I don't know if I'm really going to keep all of this. I might just be trying to add a new plugin or something. I'm going to create a new branch for that. And there's a whole process of uh, creating branches, working in those branches, uh, and then merging those branches back into the master branch. So far, we've only been working in the master branch of each repository. Yeah. And so this is the first time we're going to create a new branch. Uh, and this branch, uh, I'm just going to have ha exactly what's in the master branch in it, uh, but it's going to be called something special. It's going to be called uh, a GH Pages, uh, which is something that uh, GitHub Pages looks for to say that I should expose this branch up to uh, uh, GitHub pages and serve it up as a website. So there's a couple guides here that are uh, in uh, the slide deck. Uh, I'd encourage you to look through the simpler view uh, and understand that version of, uh, of branching. Uh, if you really want to get in nuts and bolts, go into the full uh, git.scm.com uh, book uh, and read the uh, branching section of that. Uh, uh, this book is a fantastic uh, a, a reference manual for Git, uh, but uh, it goes into more detail than you need right now. Uh, and so only go there if you actually want more, uh, more dirt scoop than uh, is in the uh, simpler view. But let's go do this. So I'm going to use two commands. The first command here, uh, is uh, git checkout. You haven't uh, heard about git checkout before. Uh, uh, git checkout is basically uh, taking uh, whatever's in the current repository uh, and pulling it down uh, all at once. Uh, uh, git pull uh, is related to git checkout. Uh, you've only done this once at clone time, uh, but uh, if somebody else, for instance, updates the uh, page, uh, if uh, 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 two of us were working in the same repository and I pushed my changes up to the repository, you're going to have to do something to pull those changes down to your local computer. And that can either be a git pull or a git checkout. Uh, in this case, git checkout uh, takes all the files in the repository in their latest version everywhere uh, and sucks them down to your local machine. Uh, and it's got this uh, parameter on it, uh, minus B, which means create a branch for this checkout. And I'm going to call that branch GH pages. So let me do that. Let me say get checkout minus b gh pages and switch to a new branch gh pages. Great. Uh, let me prove to you that uh, right now uh, there is uh, nothing up here. Uh, Derek J A dot. Uh, well, sure. This was called demo two. 
And nope, it's not going to find demo two because it doesn't exist yet. So the next thing I'm going to do is uh, do a uh, git push origin gh pages. The reason I uh, do it this way, yeah, we've used git push before, uh, but git push actually has a couple of additional parameters that we haven't talked about. Uh, um, it uh, has the, uh, a, a, the root of the current uh, repository, in this case origin, uh, and it has the name of the branch, uh, in this case GH pages. Because I've checked out to a new branch on my machine, but my uh, GitHub server doesn't know anything about a GH pages branch, I have to specify it explicitly, yeah, because now I'm creating a new uh, branch on the server. So I hit that, and it's going to push that up. And it says new branch, GH pages locally to GH pages on the server. And now I ought to uh, be able to, uh, well, maybe there's some replication time happening here. That should be all I need to uh, have this now appear. And it was pretty quick earlier, but it seems not to be quite as quick now, of course. Okay. Well, we'll go back to that in just a minute and see if it's actually there like it's supposed to be. It sometimes takes up to 10 minutes for it to replicate. Uh, uh, basically, uh, GitHub uh, scans all the projects on GitHub looking for these GitHub or GH pages branches. Uh, and when it finds a new one, it then uh, moves it up to the web server. And uh, I probably just got lucky last time that it was uh, right before a scan uh, and uh, then that came immediately up. Let's look back at that in just a minute and see if it scan happened though, because I don't want to wait refreshing for 10 minutes. Um, wanted to talk next, uh, and uh, we're just hitting kind of a little grab bag of things before we get on to uh, the meat of the, uh, the lecture today on CSS uh, and uh, yeah, Bootstrap. Uh, but the next thing uh, is JS Fiddle versus separate pages. I started writing that uh, in Visual Studio Code, uh, saving it to GitHub and then showing it as a uh, web page. Uh, whereas I've been doing a lot of editing uh, just in uh, JS Fiddle. Uh, and so uh, in JS Fiddle, uh, you uh, actually uh, separate your uh, JavaScript and your, uh, your code just a little bit differently uh, than you uh, do on a web page. Uh, in a web page that runs on its own, not inside JS Fiddle, you need to give it a head tag, uh, you need to give it an HTML tag, uh, you need to include your JavaScript as an expl explicit file. Uh, and uh, inside JS Fiddle, you don't need to, uh, yeah, to do all that. Uh, and so, um, on this one, this is just a uh, little example uh, that uh, uh, changes the uh, title. So, hello. Um, and so uh, this goes two ways. The uh, first way is in, that button uh, uh, has the uh, change uh, function. That change function uh, is grabbing uh, the uh, my text field, which was that text that just changed there, uh, and uh, uh, grabbing the uh, value of that. Uh, if there's nothing in that text field, uh, it's going to uh, pop up an alert box saying, write some real text, please. This uh, may be the first time you've seen an if statement. Did Faye and Andy go over if statements? No if statements? Okay. Um, basically, an if statement is just asking you to test some condition. Uh, and if this condition is true, if my new title.length is equal to zero, then uh, it's going to uh, go ahead and do the things inside those curly cube brackets. Uh, and uh, if it's false, it's going to skip all the stuff inside and go on to the next bit of the, uh, of the code. And this return statement uh, is a way of uh, saying from a function, exit that function immediately. Jump back up to whatever called that function. And so what this if is saying is that uh, if there's no text in there, don't change the uh, title, which is the uh, line of code after the uh, if statement, uh, and put up this alert box. You'll notice when I uh, hit uh, a blank uh, field there, it says write some real text but it doesn't get rid of the text hello. Whereas if I'd put something like a, a period in there, it's just gonna change that uh, title to a period. Um, so uh, if statements are really useful things, you run into them a lot in uh, various forms, uh, but this is probably the uh, first one we looked at in this class. Uh, and then to set that back, we're just doing a get element by ID title and setting that inner HTML back to uh, what uh, uh, my new title is, which is the variable I set out of that uh, text box. So if I wanted that to uh, be in a uh, web page of its own, uh, let's go see if we, uh, ha hey, we still don't have anything there. How come? Jade.github.io demo2. That sure looks like demo2 to me. Well, 
huh, that's disappointing. And it is supposed to be an index.html. Hmm. Why is that not being happy? One of the things I posted in the uh, Slack channel uh, that uh, I'll uh, go back and look at myself here uh, just to make sure I haven't done anything uh, horribly stupid is uh, that um, little guide on creating your first uh, a, a GitHub pages. Uh, and uh, so uh, I'm going to uh, go to my, uh, oh, there it is. Start, I already wrote code. I want to create project pages. It's already on GitHub. Uh, I created the branch GH pages, git checkout GH pages, git push origin GH pages. Yeah, 10 minutes. Username github.io project. Well. Ah, I see. Uh, it wanted the trailing slash. I was being silly and not giving it a trailing slash. Uh, uh, yeah, so, uh, Basically, this is the way the URL works, and I uh, was uh, just doing that uh, foolishly. A lot of times uh, when you have a web server there, uh, it's going to take uh, something without a, a trailing slash and automatically add a trailing slash to it. Uh, in this case, it was looking in the root of my directory.github.io for a file named demo2. Whereas with the trailing slash, uh, it says open up the directory demo2, uh, which has an index.html, uh, which automatically gets displayed. So let's uh, take this JS fiddle uh, and um, f uh, we'll close that. Uh, let's take this JS fiddle and uh, put it into uh, a, a, a web page. Uh, and uh, that'll tell us a little bit about what we have to do differently. And so uh, let's come back over here. I'm going to leave uh, my uh, head uh, empty for right now. I'll change that in just a moment. Uh, I'm pasting the uh, HTML from the JS fiddle uh, into uh, the uh, body of the HTML page. Um, I don't think I ever closed my HTML page, which is not uh, ideal. Now, because this doesn't uh, have any way of, uh, well, actually there is a way. Uh, if I uh, in here uh, enclose this in the script tag, like a lot of you guys have been uh, doing so far, uh, um, that's one way I could do it. Uh, and let's make sure uh, that uh, that works. So to get that to work, uh, I'm going to uh, go and uh, look at my git status. I have one modified file. Uh, I'm going to uh, add that file. I'm going to uh, commit that file, giving it a better message. Um, new HTML. And then I'm going to uh, git push that file. And that is pushing to, uh, oh, OK. Minus, minus, set, upstream. Gets pretty good about telling you what it needs. Uh, here we go. So that should now be up on uh, GitHub pages. And uh, let's see if. Um, Maybe not quite yet. We'll have to wait for updates there again. I'm going to quit looking for it on GitHub pages right away uh, and uh, instead uh, look for it uh, locally so I can just double click it and not have to wait for that refresh time. This also shows you another way you can uh, run things. Uh, so uh, this index.html, if I double click it, oh, it's going to open Explorer. Ooh. My uh, Windows blue screen while I was at my conference, uh, and uh, I, I uh, did not uh, rechange some of my defaults when it did so. I'm going to not admit that that's an explorer, and instead uh, say open with Chrome. That's better. 
Okay. So you see this runs just the same way as it uh, did inside uh, uh, JS Fiddle. Uh, uh, and I've now uh, still just got an HTML file that has uh, stuff in it. Uh, the better way of doing this, rather than uh, adding the uh, a, a script uh, immediately into the HTML page, uh, would be instead uh, to uh, take uh, all this out and say script uh, type equals text JavaScript and source equals test.js. And then I'm going to go to test.js uh, and I'm just going to paste that back in. So I'll save test.js, I'll save uh, index2.js, uh, I'll come back over here, I'll refresh that, uh, and I'll say hello to or one. So it works just the same way. So you can see that from the perspective of the program running, uh, it doesn't care whether things are in a uh, script tag directly uh, in the HTML or whether things are in a separate JS file that's just included from the HTML. Uh, but it's better form to include it from the HTML uh, because you do better compartmentalization that way. Yeah. Uh, to post it in GitHub page, it has to be in the same branch, but not the same file. So uh, a branch takes everything in the repository and copies it to uh, an identical copy of that. Okay, great. So it's updated now. Cool. Um, okay, I'm going to uh, keep uh, sprinting along through this stuff uh, and uh, talk about cascading style sheets, uh, unless there are any other GitHub questions people have. Nope. Clear as mud? Okay. Um, cascading style sheets uh, are uh, not my favorite topic. Uh, I, I use them a lot, uh, but they're really limited in a lot of ways. Uh, and uh, so we're going to go through some basic exercises, uh, but uh, I pretty quickly uh, try and pop up a level from there uh, and use packages like Bootstrap or UIKit or uh, uh, even some React plugins uh, to uh, save me having to write a lot of uh, CSS by hand. Uh, there are also uh, some uh, CSS preprocessors, uh, things like SAS and LESS. Uh, that make it so you uh, don't have to write CSS by hand. Uh, they all compile into CSS, though, right? and so it's important to understand a little bit about CSS uh, in order to uh, make use of some of these higher level packages. Uh, because really all they do uh, is uh, save you work, uh, and when they do something wrong, you've got to pop down to debug at this uh, raw CSS level. Um, so everything should run the same without CSS. It just looks uglier. Okay? CSS is just for styling. You have no functional code sitting here in your CSS. Uh, you have nothing that changes the way a page functions inside your CSS. Uh, it just changes the way it looks. Uh, and there are ways of selecting text in CSS, uh, three of them actually. Yeah. Uh, when we were in the um, example here uh, a minute ago, uh, we had um, a get element by ID, uh, and that get element by ID, my text field. Uh, and if we look in here, uh, my text field was uh, this input box, uh, um, or uh, the uh, H1 element title uh, was given an ID. If I want to uh, color something uh, I, uh, using CSS uh, and use a uh, pound sign or the, uh, uh, the, the number sign uh, and the, the name of the ID, then that's going to uh, uh, yeah, create that uh, only uh, that named item uh, as something that the CSS affects. Uh, if I uh, instead uh, want to uh, change all H1 tags uh, or, uh, or or everything that uh, is, sorry, that's the uh, the next one by tag. Uh, uh, everything that's of the same class, um, I could give my uh, two input uh, boxes uh, uh, here uh, uh, the same class name, and that means that they are uh, styled the same way. Uh, We'll use classes a lot when we come to Bootstrap. You uh, can think of class as basically being an ID that applies to any number of items. Uh, every ID needs to be unique, but classes do not need to be unique uh, uh, because multiple things can belong to the same class. And so I can style by class by using a period, or I can just give the name of the tag. And tags are kind of set in stone. Uh, there are only a, a, a handful of them. Paragraph tags, P tags, H1 tags, input tags, uh, uh, a, a button tags. Uh, that's basically the HTML thing that you put inside angle brackets when you're writing your HTML. 
So you can target by tag, you can target by class, and you can target by ID. They're cascading because style sheets uh, are uh, overlapped, uh, that basically the most specific thing wins. Uh, if I've got one style sheet that tags by, uh, uh, or that uh, specifies by tag, so uh, all paragraph tags will be in green text. And then I've got another style sheet that says all paragraph tags of class input uh, are uh, in red text. Uh, uh, but then I say, yeah, this paragraph tag with the ID foo gets purple text. That ID foo is going to get purple text because the more specific the specifier, the uh, higher priority it has. Now you can use this thing called an important tag uh, that uh, somewhat uh, interrupts this. And if something at a higher level has an important tag, uh, something at a lower level may not displace it. Uh, but try and avoid that for right now because that's where you get some of the really complicated styling bugs uh, emerging when you try and override. So we're going to do an exercise in here. Uh, I've got a, 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 a JS Fiddle, uh, and uh, a, I'll uh, pull it up and uh, just kind of show you the first part of this exercise, and then I'm going to uh, have you guys uh, go off and do some of the others. Uh, so um, this JS Fiddle uh, just has some pretty simple text in it. Uh, um, I've got a paragraph with the ID para. I've got another paragraph with para2 and uh, a, a paragraph with the class bar. And uh, if I wanted to, uh, for instance, uh, just do the uh, first para tag uh, and uh, do something to it. I'm going to say uh, para, and I'm going to use a curly Q bracket, and I'm going to uh, say uh, font uh, size colon 60. Let me refresh that. Hey, let me refresh that. My font size. Hey. Uh, hmm. Well, I might have chose the wrong thing to play with there. Uh, see, I never write CSS by hand, and it shows. Yay, Google. EM versus pixels. I don't want to go to that one. Oh, I'm missing the PX, of course. Yep. Thank you. Much better. Thanks. Um, yeah, and so uh, that's an example of targeting one thing. I'm going to uh, have you guys uh, give a, a shot at uh, yeah, there's the 40 pixels high at making something green. Uh, uh, making the other paragraph blue and more text on the button red. And uh, give me a shout or uh, do a bit of a raise of hands when you get that far. You'll have to probably Google those other ones just like I did to find that. Uh, but uh, Google CSS color or uh, CSS uh, uh, yeah, button uh, color uh, uh, and uh, it'll certainly pull up the style sheet uh, description for how to do that. Questions on the exercise? <laughs> Did you finish Lexbox Friday? You're going to be bored with that one, too.
Okay, everybody got that? Roll on. Yeah. Of course, okay. um, select by, yeah, well, here, let me actually show you. Uh, select by uh, tag, so this third one uh, uh, yeah, gives you the uh, whole thing. Uh, and uh, so. Uh, there it is, I'm a paragraph. And oh, I didn't put the third one in there, did I? I had uh, the paragraph as blue, but uh, let's do that with button. What's that? Uh, not background, background. That's why the world's not right. There we go. Uh, and of course, my blue is not blue because I'm in high contrast mode, so everything in the world is weird. Um, one of the things about uh, using colors uh, in here uh, in the uh, CSS is that they correspond to the uh, uh, style sheet that's currently in play for uh, Windows. Uh, and uh, so my high contrast mode uh, uh, basically has redefined all of my colors. Uh, now, you could still specify something with an explicit color, uh, um, uh, but uh, you'd have to do that uh, by uh, giving the color number for that color. Uh, and it's really a, uh, a kind of poor thing to, uh, poor practice to follow, uh, because although it lets you set your page up with just the precise colors you want on that page, uh, it doesn't pay attention to accessibility settings. Uh, 
uh, when you use uh, direct colors, uh, you break screen readers and break high contrast mode and uh, all sorts of accessibility settings depend on you using things that can then be remapped when the uh, theme uh, changes underneath you. Yeah. Yours is not working. Not working. Mm -hmm. Very general statement. Cool. So, next thing. Um, I don't know we want to go through this next exercise. We're running late. Um, let's skip the uh, making all paragraph tags blue without changing the class or ID specifiers. And uh, next thing I want to go through, and this is the last thing uh, before taking a uh, break and uh, play just as much of this as you uh, want to uh, and uh, then take a break. And uh, we're going to take until like quarter after uh, uh, yeah, so uh, 15 minutes, and uh, if you want to play for five minutes and then do the rest at home, or uh, uh, play for all 15 and not take a break, whichever you want. Uh, but uh, Flexbox uh, is a uh, way of positioning things. Uh, it's very closely related to CSS, uh, um, uh, yeah, but uh, it's uh, actually a layer on top of uh, uh, CSS, and it requires explicit browser support. Uh, so in this uh, a, a table here, I can see that uh, the five major browsers, uh, Chrome, IE, Firefox, Safari, and Opera, um, really, uh, between those five, uh, you've accounted for uh, 99 point something percent of all the, uh, the browsers out there. Uh, when we look at uh, usage patterns, uh, uh, Chrome and IE uh, account for, uh, between them, uh, about 92 percent of uh, browsers out there. Uh, and so a lot of people uh, really do their uh, browser map of what uh, they uh, will write their web page for uh, just taking Chrome and IE into account. Uh, and when you include Firefox, uh, you're, uh, you're even further up there. Uh, Chrome IE and Firefox are all three uh, fairly modern browsers uh, that uh, support uh, a, a pretty full set of, uh, uh, of plugins and extensions. Uh, and so uh, these versions here, IE version 11, uh, Chrome version 29, we're actually up to 53 or so now, I think. Uh, um, and uh, Firefox is also, uh, I think, in the 40s at this point, uh, um, are uh, uh, going to support Flexbox for you, which means that basically, unless you're trying to uh, target uh, really old browsers or uh, really old mobile browsers, uh, you're okay relying on Flexbox. Um, I could talk about Flexbox, but the Flexbox Froggy game is a lot more fun. Uh, and uh, so uh, go ahead and hit the URL flexboxfroggy.com uh, and uh, play a little bit of Flexbox Froggy. And since you've solved Flexbox Froggy, you can use it to
everybody had a roughly happy frog. <laughs> so carry on if you like from <laughs> Better ready to carry on a few I frameworks? Cool. Um, Flexbox Froggy is fun. It's uh, we could we could spend the rest of the class on Flexbox Froggy. I'm, I'm sure. Um, there's also one for uh, jQuery that uh, we may have a look at if we have enough time in this class. Uh, I put a link in the slides though uh, in case we uh, don't have time. Um, there are a whole number of uh, UI frameworks. So uh, basically, uh, the low-level uh, CSS uh, positioning uh, is such a pain uh, that uh, every uh, uh, person that's run into it's tried their own thing to, uh, to get around it. Uh, um, so uh, we're going to look most closely at Bootstrap uh, in this class. Uh, last term, I uh, included UI Kit, which is an alternative to Bootstrap uh, that I actually like just a little bit better than Bootstrap. Uh, but uh, Bootstrap has such mind share uh, and it's so easy to start with uh, that uh, we'll start there. But know that UI Kit exists uh, and uh, if you start feeling limited by the styles in Bootstrap and just can't make things look like you want them to, uh, uh, have a look at UI Kit uh, and have a look back up at SlideShare from last term slides uh, and find my slides on uh, UI Kit. Um, there are a bunch of things that uh, are a little bit beyond a uh, styling framework. Uh, so I do a lot of work in React. Uh, React is uh, Kind of somewhere in between a, 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 a framework uh, and uh, a, 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 and a platform. Uh, um, things like uh, a, a Angular uh, are uh, really much more platform. So it has not just UI pieces, but uh, data transit pieces, uh, a plug-in architecture, uh, a, a, a kind of a proper way of doing things. Even a networking stack uh, uh, exists in Angular. Uh, but uh, we're talking really just stuff at the UI layer. Uh, and so Bootstrap uh, is uh, really uh, just a, a set of extensions to CSS, really. And it uses the same class structure that we just used in pointing uh, the uh, styling uh, uh, as uh, a whole basis of a structure of uh, stylings that can apply to those classes. Uh, um, it sits on top of jQuery. Uh, and uh, jQuery is something that actually has a, a lot of use. Uh, um, in this last homework, when you did the uh, DOM navigation explicitly, uh, uh, you're putting in the append child and uh, the get element by ID and all that, uh, um, that's something that jQuery makes much, much easier because right? you can use search specifiers uh, and uh, little uh, convenience commands in jQuery uh, to do all that stuff for you. And uh, so it may have been that when you were researching how to do that homework, you came uh, into a lot of things that uh, started with a dollar sign. Uh, and then had a bit of uh, a, a commands, uh, strange commands after that. Uh, those are all jQuery commands. Uh, and uh, it's something that's uh, very much worth looking into. Uh, I'm not going to do anything explicit with it in this course. Uh, we'll use some frameworks that depend on jQuery, uh, but I won't have you directly writing jQuery anywhere in here. Uh, you'll find it really useful to your development as a uh, web developer, though, to uh, look at it and know something about it. Uh, and this little uh, try jQuery.com game uh, is. Uh, not as fun as Flexbox Froggy. Flexbox Froggy is fun, uh, but uh, um, it's a uh, kind of gamified way of learning a little bit more about jQuery. So jump into that if you're uh, you're interested. Uh, uh, for the most part, though, uh, just know uh, that uh, jQuery must be present, must be included as a resource uh, whenever you're using Bootstrap. Uh, if strange things happen and they look okay, but uh, they don't really work okay, uh, clicking on something doesn't make it click or uh, uh, drop downs don't drop down the way they should, but it looks okay. Yeah, it probably means you've uh, forgotten to include jQuery or included an incorrect version of jQuery. So most functions are just through CSS. Uh, they uh, work by attaching class names to your uh, HTML objects. Uh, and uh, your HTML uh, you can uh, add those class names in order to add those new bootstrap drive behaviors to your HTML. So for instance, uh, a uh, button uh, or, or this href here with a class button, uh, button danger uh, makes it a, a, a colorful button in uh, Bootstrap. And so we're going to go through a bit of an exercise here. Uh, and uh, I've given you a uh, fiddle to start from. Uh, and this fiddle has a, a couple things in it that I want to point out to you. Uh, um, anytime you use something in JS Fiddle with external resources, that's this area over on the left-hand side here, uh, uh, you can add uh, a, a, a CSS uh, or uh, a jQuery or other resources that your, your Fiddle depends on uh, over in that external resources section. Uh, 
And uh, so uh, if you want to know what to add there, uh, that's where you'll have to uh, either uh, look for uh, uh, jQuery uh, CDN. Remember we talked about content delivery networks in the first class? Uh, content delivery networks are things that uh, make sure your content can be accessible from every region around the globe. Uh, and so uh, jQuery and Bootstrap are uh, popular enough frameworks uh, that they both have CDNs uh, yeah, that uh, have been provisioned for them. So you just have to point to the jQuery CDN uh, and uh, yeah, that will uh, give you uh, what you uh, what you want to use. Uh, so for instance, I would uh, just put this script tag into uh, if I were writing my HTML page directly. Uh, and uh, if I were in uh, JS Fiddle, uh, I would uh, just copy the, uh, the, it, the URL to uh, the uh, minified jQuery JS. And I would put that in as an external resource over here. So that's how you, uh, you handle external resources in JS Fiddle uh, and uh, how you actually pull in the uh, JS Query uh, and the uh, jQuery and uh, Bootstrap resources into your web page. Uh, I've got a slide in just a minute on, uh, on that as well. What I want you to do in this exercise, though, uh, is uh, uh, work with uh, this really short definition here. Uh, and uh, notice I don't have any explicit CSS. Uh, but I've created this as a uh, danger button. If I wanted instead to uh, create it as a success button, it would become a different color. And run that guy. So try the other button definitions out uh, and uh, just make sure you kind of get how attaching a class to your HTML and loading in the bootstrap uh, can uh, it, it give you a, a whole bunch of uh, definitions and behaviors you wouldn't have otherwise had. Try and make me one of each of those. Oops. Well, I guess one of each of those would be made easier if I gave you the list of what each of those are, wouldn't it? I think when we get to the back end section, I'm going to have uh, one of the projects or one of the homeworks rather uh, be uh, to uh, create a little uh, web page that uh, lets all of you see it and put down, I'm still working, I'm done, and I'm watching Facebook. <laughs> um, in the meantime, before we get to build that little application, uh, uh, go ahead and raise a, uh, a, a raise hand or uh, just uh, uh, let me uh, let me know look back this way when you've gotten far enough that you understand it and uh, you're uh, feeling done. Is there anybody who does not have at least two buttons? You don't have two buttons. Eh, if you give them different classes, they should look different. Yeah, so if I change the class to a simple list of classes that are here, um, that's uh, it will uh, determine uh, how the buttons look. And this class uh, is put in bootstrap class for all.
So in this case, it just changes the button color. It doesn't uh, do much more than you could have done by uh, directly targeting in uh, CSS. Uh, but uh, the uh, thing that it does do that's kind of nice is that uh, when you use the uh, bootstrap definitions, uh, it ties it to a bootstrap theme. And uh, so uh, bootstrap themes are something that changes the uh, whole set of colors at once, or in some cases, the whole set of behaviors at once. Uh, so we talked about how uh, using uh, just the raw colors in CSS, using uh, a, a background color yellow rather than background color uh, a, 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 and then a, a color number uh, is good because it ties it into the uh, Windows themes. Uh, this is kind of one other uh, layer of abstraction on color theming uh, over top of that uh, where you can apply a bootstrap theme uh, that's still responsive to the uh, Windows colors but is also coherent within its own color scheme. And so if uh, we were to uh, look at all the buttons there, uh, uh, we've got uh, default, primary, success, info, warning, and danger. And uh, I think it's really weird that in high contrast mode, the danger button is green, but there we go. High contrast mode is weird. Questions about bootstrap buttons? Okay. So the second one here, uh, I'm going to uh, have you uh, uh, work with this next fiddle, uh, and uh, uh, using uh, that, I want you to uh, edit the page so the tooltip pops up over the gray area at the top, the jumbotron that reads "Hooray," and you're going to uh, look at w3schools.com uh, bootstrap, uh, and uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a little bit hidden. Uh, so uh, if we uh, look at the uh, bootstrap uh, 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 that is referenced in uh, JS Fiddle uh, here in external resources, uh, and it's minified. Uh, so I'm actually going to uh, not point to that one, uh, but rather go find uh, bootstrap CDN and see if there's a non-minified version that uh, I can uh, can find. Uh, latest compiled and minified. I don't want the minified one, though. Let me download it. Uh, come on. And here in the CSS, uh, let me uh, open up the uh, bootstrap CSS. It's a 21 kilobyte file, so fairly small. Uh, uh, it's very dense, and you very rarely want to uh, actually go edit the uh, bootstrap CSS file. Uh, I'd say pretty much never, actually. Uh, but uh, sometimes it's useful to uh, open it up and uh, see what's, uh, what's living in there. And so in this case, uh, I'm going to get rid of that and expand this, and uh, I'm going to uh, search the uh, bootstrap for uh, BTN danger. There we go. And uh, you see I've got these definitions in my uh, bootstrap CSS for button danger, button danger focus, button danger hover, button danger active, active hover. Uh, these are all the different states that a uh, button can be in, or button danger disabled. Uh, and uh, because all of those states uh, are uh, uh, explicitly uh, specified uh, in uh, the uh, yeah, the bootstrap, it means that uh, when uh, uh, I change the state of this button to disabled, it goes to the same color scheme as if I changed another button to disabled. Uh, and so that's where the uh, definitions for uh, bootstrap actually are, where it turns the uh, bootstrap classes uh, into the raw CSS is from this file. So this next one, uh, this is what I think is the uh, best intro uh, bootstrap uh, website, uh, is the W3Schools uh, bootstrap site. Uh, you'll be uh, going back and forth to that one a lot just to uh, go through the tutorial or learn what the different classes are. Uh, um, had this uh, Jumbotron that I mentioned, uh, and uh, the Jumbotron is basically just a header, uh, and so you might want to look at W3Schools creating a Jumbotron. Um, but uh, I have a uh, starter fiddle here uh, that um, you can uh, type in that link if you want, or if you have the slides open, hit that link. Uh, and uh, what I'm asking you to uh, do is to modify this page uh, uh, to do two things. Understand
understand what a responsive UI means, and we haven't talked about that yet, uh, but uh, will in just a minute. Basically, a responsive UI uh, is uh, one that uh, resizes properly. Uh, and uh, so if I uh, resize this to be great big, it's going to uh, have that uh, stuff all sit in a uh, single uh, column here uh, uh, or uh, uh, flow nicely. If I uh, make it really small, uh, it flows so it would, for instance, fit on a uh, cell phone screen or something. And that's one of the advantages of using a UI framework like Bootstrap uh, is that uh, you get this responsiveness behavior for different platforms automatically by virtue of using the Bootstrap classes. Uh, and you don't have to explicitly put in things like you would in CSS to make it flow differently with different size pages. And so what I'd like you to uh, do is uh, use that reference from W3 Schools uh, and edit the page so that a tooltip pops up over the gray area at the top, the Jumbotron that uh, reads Hooray figure out how to uh, put a, uh, a tool tip in there. And I will leave it on that page so you have all the links in front of you. And this one's a little bit more involved, uh, so uh, we'll take uh, uh, maybe uh, until 22 on this one. Eight or nine minutes.
So normal, uh, <laughs> yeah. you can always overwrite the terms. Uh, yeah. You uh, cancel that. Uh, uh, that would be uh, a good one. Uh, uh, you can overwrite my class, or you could say uh, uh, that uh, you know, you're in your CSS. Uh, if you uh, said uh, what you did, uh, the number of the arm, um, and uh, you get the document number of the arm. Okay, everybody has success with Hover Hooray's? Hooray? Hooray? Hooray. That was a pretty subdued hooray. It's late. Cool. Um, so basically, just to uh, make sure we're all on the, uh, the same page with it, uh, um, if I uh, had that same thing over here and hovered over, it would uh, be saying hooray. And uh, the reason it does that is because that uh, uh, data toggle, uh, it, I'm going to add a space there so it doesn't get hidden. Um, that data toggle tooltip with title of hooray is what's making that uh, come up. Uh, and you can apply that data toggle. Uh, it, it, a parameter to uh, anything with bootstrap styling. Uh, uh, one of the things bootstrap does for you uh, is uh, uh, adds these additional uh, 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 parameters to uh, anything else that's within bootstrap to add tooltips and things like that. Uh, so uh, again, the, the, the breadth of bootstrap is uh, far more than we can cover today, but I just want to uh, kind of illustrate that it uh, works on classes, that it adds some new parameters to uh, uh, some objects you're already familiar with, uh, and uh, basically it makes everything more better. 
So bootstrap themes are the next thing that I uh, want to uh, touch on in here. Uh, and uh, uh, basically a theme uh, is a, a whole set of uh, things that you can do uh, with uh, bootstrap. Uh, and uh, it uh, is um, something that you'll uh, want to, uh, oh, wait a minute. Uh, oh, I didn't have a bootstrap themes exercise. That's yeah, okay. Um, I, I'll, I'll talk through this example a little bit more then. Uh, uh, so CSS is all uh, basically open source, uh, or at least uh, open uh, uh, readability. Uh, you can minify your CSS, and it kind of obfuscates it and makes it hard to, uh, to see. Uh, but uh, they're just stylings. Uh, and so uh, a lot of people will kind of uh, copy themes or copy websites by grabbing the CSS and grabbing the stylings. Uh, and uh, it's... Uh, you know, of varying degrees of okay. Yeah, some designers would certainly maintain it's not at all okay. Yeah, but uh, it's how you learn to design good websites. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, consequently, uh, yeah, themes for uh, making uh, Bootstrap look and work the way you want it to uh, are very common uh, and uh, very popular uh, and usually free. There are some places you can pay for a yeah, Bootstrap theme, uh, but for the most part, you don't uh, don't need to. Uh, uh, Boots Watch is a uh, great one. Uh, it's one that I uh, go uh, look at a lot. Uh, and uh, just to get ideas of uh, uh, different uh, themes and different ways to, uh, uh, to use it. Uh, so uh, let's look at uh, the theme uh, library for this. Uh, uh, things like Surreal. Oh, these are all going to look so weird because I have high contrast on. I almost don't even want to look at them. Yeah, I totally actually don't want to look at them. Jet black on electric blue is not jet black on electric blue with high contrast on. Um, okay. Lesson learned. Uh, uh, a high contrast may make this projector work better, but it makes bootstrap themes uh, work way, way worse. Uh, um, uh, one of the things I, I guess I do want to point out on it, though, uh, is that uh, the theme affects not only uh, the uh, colors and things, but also the uh, rendering of things like buttons. Uh, so Flatly uh, has uh, 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 buttons that are, uh, uh, have no rounding uh, to them or no edge uh, lift to them. Uh, if I were instead uh, in a, uh, a theme like Sandstone and looked at a uh, button, uh, uh, well, that didn't work. Um, Base lab buttons. There we go. You can see this edge uh, styling, uh, so that they uh, kind of roll over and uh, have this uh, slightly three-dimensional uh, look about them. Uh, um, but again, it's just the visuals. Uh, that uh, it's nothing but kind of the decorations around the edges of buttons and what happens when you roll over them and things. Uh, but they work in sets, and so uh, you can download an entire theme from uh, some place like uh, Bootswatch uh, and use that to affect all of your website at once. Um, the way that you actually uh, do that uh, is um, here was the same page we just looked at with the uh, hover over uh, uh, hooray uh, and uh, I've loaded this optional theme uh, here let me actually because it's so small this optional th theme by saying uh, uh, import and then the URL uh, of the uh, bootstrap theme that was there and uh, so the way I get that URL uh, is uh, quite literally just going to uh, the uh, uh, yeah, the Boots Watch, in this case, uh, finding the theme that I want, uh, and uh, 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 then uh, scrolling down, making sure it all looks right, and uh, forms, and nav bars, and indicators, and uh, this is just kind of what all the stuff looked like in, uh, in this theme, and uh, when I uh, decide, okay, yeah, that's the, uh, the one I want, um, where is my... Download for that then, actually. Okay, so it's just uh, picking up the URL off of that. So if I wanted to uh, make this, uh, let's not do Cyborg since that reads so horribly, uh, but uh, rather Cosmo, uh, um, then I'd just take it from Cosmo rather than Darkly. Which in this case, since I have my high contrast, is a... Uh, Good thing. Hey. And yay, my bootstrap page looks better suddenly. Um, questions about themes? Make sense?
just Google bootstrap themes and you can make everything uh, suddenly look better all at, uh, in one fell swoop. There's also uh, yeah, something called bootstrap templates. Uh, and a template uh, is a, a bit more than a theme. Uh, a template uh, also includes layout information for the elements that go on your bootstrap page. Uh, and uh, so uh, uh, this is, uh, there are a lot of paid templates. Uh, yeah, basically when you're designing a website, uh, they often come out in, uh, in templates, but there's also some free ones. Uh, and uh, it, again, this is gonna be horrible uh, in my uh, high contrast mode. Uh, um, but uh, look through uh, Start Bootstrap and uh, some of the templates. Uh, and uh, when it comes time to uh, design your own website, uh, starting from a template uh, gives you a lot of behaviors and rollover behaviors and hover behaviors and all this stuff uh, in a way that uh, is uh, a whole lot easier to, uh, to actually get started with. Um, of course, on your web pages, rather than JS Fiddle, you're going to have to do a few things differently. Uh, uh, and uh, Git Bootstrap is the uh, place that you go for this. And so I'm going to do a uh, quick uh, run through on the uh, page that we loaded right at the very start. Uh, and uh, just a reminder of uh, where that is. Uh, that's the uh, hello page here. And uh, let's turn this actually into a uh, Bootstrap uh, page just to get an idea of how that. Uh, how that comes together. So I'm going to uh, go to get bootstrap, getting started. We'll think about that. We'll seriously think about that. Boy, streaming off my computer makes me so dissatisfied with the speed of my computer. And we'll find them off the uh, CDNs here. I'm gonna grab these and throw those into, um, let's get rid of Bootstrap. So we just had, let's get rid of Welcome. So we had our uh, index.html and we had our test.js. Uh, and uh, uh, basically uh, the uh, index.html uh, in the head uh, is uh, where we're going to throw these uh, three uh, uh, definitions for where we actually find uh, Bootstrap. And if I could actually get to the bottom of my page. Hello. Then we'd see that uh, we're loading a couple style sheets uh, and uh, then the uh, JavaScript. Uh, now, uh, remember we also though need to uh, have jQuery in here or things don't uh, often work the way that we want them to. Uh, and uh, so uh, I think I had the jQuery uh, window open. Uh, let's find the uh, jQuery CDN, there it is. And so that's gonna load as a script uh, and I'll do that also in my uh, head and let's actually do that before we load the uh, jQuery. I'm going to save that. Uh, I'm going to uh, come back and uh, run that. Um, is that where I was? That wasn't my file window. There it is. I'm going to come back and run that uh, just to make sure it's uh, happy and still uh, running at this point. Yes, it is, although I'm not using any bootstrap classes, so uh, let's do that next. Let's go, uh, oh, I don't know what we want to uh, want to do. Uh, let's uh, just make our uh, RH1 title into a Jumbotron here. Pop over here and refresh. And boom, we've got a little bit of styling around that. So you can see I've got a, uh, an active uh, a bootstrap uh, in here now uh, by including those things off of the uh, CDNs. Uh, and uh, I mean, of course, we could do the same thing that we uh, just uh, did in that exercise, uh, whatever else we want to uh, do. Stool tip title equals gray.
Hooray. Um, so uh, now let's go uh, find the theme that uh, we wanted to uh, pull in. Let's, uh, well, let's actually just go grab it off of uh, where we uh, pulled this one. I didn't mind that theme. Um, oh, uh, that actually brings up something else. That's actually in the CSS that that's pulling in the optional theme. Uh, so uh, let's go uh, yeah, look up uh, how to pull in a CSS. Uh, and I'm going to uh, yeah, just kind of show you how I'd find this by, yeah, I didn't remember things, uh, I, uh, so that uh, you can see how to, uh, to do that. Styles and colors, inline. I don't want to do them in line. External CSS, and that's this uh, same link rel that uh, we uh, uh, used for pulling in the uh, bootstrap. Uh, so uh, I'm going to go put that into here, and I'll put that after all of the uh, bootstrap, but before my script. And I'm just going to call this test.css. Uh, and again, because that file doesn't exist yet, uh, I'll uh, come back in here and say uh, touch test.css, and that will create it for me. And then I'm back in here, and uh, hello, where are my files? Let me open up test.css. And in test.css, uh, I'll uh, go uh, paste in that import uh, statement to put my uh, theme in there. And save that. And I think I still need to save index.html. And with all those guys saved, uh, now I can come back in here. Uh, well, here actually, just in here and refresh that. And not a huge difference, but that's the new uh, theme that I had uh, loaded in there. So we know how to uh, load uh, themes, uh, reference CSS, uh, to uh, uh, reference the uh, bootstrap uh, uh, CSS, uh, and uh, do that into uh, uh, the web page that, uh, that we're creating. Um, just to finish things off on that front so that you have it all here on the recording if you want it, uh, let's uh, now uh, push that back up to our web page get status. Um, that's going to tell me that I've got two modified files and one untracked file. So I'll get add dot. Now if I get status, it'll show me that uh, they're all tracked and up to date. Um, and uh, then I'm going to get commit minus M added bootstrap stylings and CSS. And I'm going to get push and push that up. And it will think about that for a minute, get all done. And then who knows how quickly that's going to update, but uh, in theory, it will update up here someday soon. Well, maybe that's only a theory. At some point, that will update. Um, any questions about that whole process? Okay. Yeah. Oh, um, I believe that I uh, pulled the 2.0 uh, jQuery. Yeah. Uh, basically, anything after 2.0 will work just fine. Uh, and this is often one of the uh, things you've got to play with a bit because. Uh, if you have other things that depend on jQuery or using jQuery uh, functions, uh, uh, finding the version of jQuery that plays with all of your plugins properly is sometimes a little bit of a, uh, a guessing game. Um, I think actually Bootstrap works with anything after 1.91 um, is or 1.9.1 is uh, what it says. Other questions? Okay. Um, Moving right along then, uh, um, that's actually, uh, so, so uh, I, okay, remember a few things in here. Uh, you'll want your, uh, set your JavaScript to run in the body. This is something a lot of people had uh, a, uh, a problem with. Uh, um, 
That's actually not uh, always the case. Uh, we, we've been running in the head for most of the things uh, so far. Uh, uh, where this is, uh, I I anyways, and uh, uh, make sure uh, it's uh, on the right place. It's either on load or uh, no wrap in head. And particularly if you are uh, uh, using uh, definitions that uh, need to be uh, made available before uh, the uh, HTML loads, you'll want to put that up in the uh, head. That's where all of our links went. Uh, if you are uh, using uh, things in the uh, script in uh, uh, JS Fiddle uh, that depend on things having been loaded already, uh, that's where you'll use on body. Uh, so uh, those are your two options in uh, JS Fiddle. I think I copied that page in. Uh, uh, without having uh, edited it prop uh, properly, because all I really mentioned uh, to mention there uh, is uh, uh, that F12 uh, on PC and uh, Control Option I on Mac to get your developer console. Is the developer console something that uh, all of you all have been using so far? I know I mentioned it uh, in the second class, uh, and anytime you console log, uh, that's going to uh, be uh, absolutely critical. Um, but uh, no, I don't have jQuery in there. How come? Hmm. Oh, probably just because it's in the wrong order. Okay. Uh, jQuery goes first. Speaking of my F12 developer console and referencing it often. There, that error is gone. Um, yeah, so the uh, developer console is really useful. Uh, anytime you want to uh, debug a piece of JavaScript, uh, Go in here and look at that. Use console log messages uh, uh, liberally sprinkled throughout your code to uh, spit things out kind of uh, willy-nilly to see what's uh, actually going on in your variables and everything else. Um, I kind of think I brought that slide in by accident, though, uh, out of the uh, deck from last term that I uh, copied it from. But it's a good things to know. Um, so we moved a little bit more quickly through some of those than I expected uh, tonight. Uh, and uh, I, it's uh, only about five after eight, uh, and we've kind of hit the end of uh, what I prepared for uh, for this lecture. Uh, and thankfully, some of you aren't quite as glazed over as, uh, as on other nights. Uh, uh, how are things feeling? Uh, the homework that's up here, I'm going to ask you to uh, create a, uh, a site, uh, actually with no uh, JavaScript necessarily uh, on uh, this one. Uh, um, and uh, I'm going to have you do it as a resume site. Uh, uh, feel free to have it be somebody else's resume if you want. Uh, I, I think most valuable is if it's your own, because uh, uh, then you can point to it when you uh, want to uh, uh, get a job sometime and just point people to your website. It's all impressive and stuff. Uh, but uh, uh, for data privacy reasons, uh, I, I really care that you can create a page like this. Uh, so uh, don't feel you have to put your own information up there, and certainly don't feel you have to put private information like phone number and stuff. Uh, uh, up on your uh, your resume. I just care that it's formatted like a resume would be formatted. Nick Donald Duck's uh, resume if you want to. Um, what I want to have in it though, uh, it should use Bootstrap for styling and Flexbox for positioning. Uh, and uh, I want it to uh, include at least a title, a list of skills uh, formatted nicely in a job history section. Uh, and uh, yeah, so since you're using Flexbox and Bootstrap, uh, uh, you'll be pushing it around in, uh, in, in nice tables or blocks. Uh, there's a whole way of doing tables in Bootstrap, by the way, uh, that uh, is uh, something we didn't really cover tonight, uh, but you can do some uh, get some reading on it. It's much, much nicer than the uh, raw HTML uh, table layout, uh, which is kind of the bane of HTML's existence. Uh, never use an HTML table again if you can ever, uh, ever help it. Uh, Bootstrap's going to do a lot better for you on that. Um, I would like but do not require this page to be responsive. Uh, uh, meaning that uh, it uh, would be great if uh, you know, when you uh, use the bootstrap classes, you can scroll it down to a cell phone size or scroll it up to a, uh, a, a an ordinary monitor uh, size web page uh, and have it adapt properly. Uh, uh, try to do that. Uh, uh, if you uh, break responsiveness uh, in some place, though, uh, I'm not going to require that. Uh, but it's something that I, I think should be a goal as you uh, strive for this. Uh, uh, make sure your commit history reflects your work progress on this. Uh, I uh, think I talked about that at the start, uh, but uh, every time you make an update of any substance, uh, make sure you uh, commit and push it up. Uh, uh, when I uh, look at a page like this, uh, I'd be expecting in general uh, to uh, see uh, you know, maybe eight or ten uh, different changes and different things you're playing with uh, uh, pushed into that commit history. At least that's what I would push up in there. Uh, again, I may do commits a bit more frequently than, uh, than most, uh, maybe even than advisable. Uh, but the more granular your changes in your commit history, the more easily you'll be able to track what you did uh, with uh, with each step. Uh, 
And uh, although it's not a requirement to do JavaScript, you can find something cool to do with JavaScript uh, in, uh, in a resume site, uh, by all means put it in there uh, and let's actually uh, call it a bonus point if there's cool JavaScript in your page. Questions about this week's homework? If you feel like it, uh, I'm uh, certainly available until uh, the end of class. If you want to uh, sit and work on it, I'm available to help. Uh, if you don't and you're burned out and want to go home, that's just fine too. Leave that up to you. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Um, so the unit history, is the same file again? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, I, I actually had a uh, question on that uh, that I want you all to hear as well. But, uh, when you do this, uh, you don't need to create a new file uh, for uh, each uh, push to uh, get GitHub. Uh, when you just see the Yes, exactly. Yeah, so uh, we change the file, your heart's good commitment, and push up uh, and, and push it to your word. And it's much, much better if it's in the same file, but then you can do this, go through the commit list, and try to see the middle one by one. Okay. 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 I had my uh, code window open here, uh, and uh, I uh, make my edits directly in it, uh, and uh, then uh, I uh, find that in the uh, uh, the file explorer, uh, um, and uh, then open that in the browser directly, and uh, in my case, opening in Chrome. And then every time I make a change, I just refresh, and uh, that, that shows up. Right, so this is the uh, point that you have to uh, use that script tag to uh, send in your JavaScript. Uh, and so you did, but you didn't even really get the block uh, And uh, so if you move that up to the head, then uh, that will fall away. Mm 
So you have a subdirectory called JS, so this that JS and that subdirectory. Is that right? Hey, uh, I have this. See, it's not finding that JS file. Uh, it is why it's not better than that. So, so JS slash list.js is implying you have a subdirectory called JS with list.js. Can you show me this directory in your mind? Is that the JS one? Uh, well, your perfect directory. Uh, no, my box is broken. Oh, are you going to do it? Oh, you're making your own. Uh, it's, uh, you can pull up the uh, menu screen, uh, or if you don't want to use the menu, that's fine. Uh, um, but it should be on your own side. Okay, okay. Good luck. Yeah, you said in a switch or a condition, you know, in the style of the Okay, so it's this style. It's primarily style. Uh, no, that's that's in that uh, in Bash. Uh, the, it's it's in the trying to find the record with the word document. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, 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 what I, what I, that's okay. so let's go back to the place you were pushing uh, that uh, terminal window. Do you there? Okay, let's go back in here again and find that. Then. Uh, and so, uh, uh, where what directory is it? Uh, here we go, yeah. Um, no, you, you really don't need to do that. Uh, so there are two ways. Uh, you can either do it from the finder and use release the directory and go on the river. Is that right? um, no, no, you're good. That's always going to be fine. Even if I can read the file. Even if you don't like it. Oh my god, yeah, that's yeah, going to clear a lot of space yeah. and delete on me. Absolutely, you can. Uh, because they're up on your uh, you're getting now, now, don't believe you can push it up to get what you want to say. Well, but, I have nothing on here that I actually want. <laughs> <laughs> then, yes, you can delete anything uh, and it still exists on your uh, it's one of the wonderful things about GitHub is that uh, if, if, if your computer dies, uh, uh, if uh, you get uh, your computer gets hit by a bus, uh, it, it doesn't matter, your GitHub is still safe. Okay. 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 Okay, so let's try that. Um, you have an index.jhtml. Is it calling your job in JS? Okay. This one? It's kind of called a script.js. So it probably is not actually going to call that in properly. Yeah, but uh, let's uh, go. Um, do you have it open in the initial sphere code? Do you have it open in the initial sphere code? And this is the right version. Then uh, I would just change that to Java now. Because that's what it is. And I would save that. I usually 
So great, uh, I would now go in that uh, if, if, if file in that folder, open it up in a browser and see if it's going to So, do you still have a couple window open? Yeah. Um, if you in here in that version of Java. Oh, this is Great. Same PWD. Doesn't have any there. Neither is project one, project not one. So, I'm not going to get to that. <laughs> So your home directory and all your files are really confusing. I would suggest going there and going back to our folders. But that doesn't work. So something is wrong. I leave that page open. I don't go to that. Because we're not going to edit until it works and then come back to that. Because I got it, I think it works in my bed. Well, it's not okay. Well, that's a good thing. Uh, it works somewhere. Uh, let's go look back at Visual Studio Code at this index of HTML and that job. So I worry because that page we're looking at doesn't even show a, uh, a, a input comment. Well, usually, like in the JS code, I would click on that and show it, like show that. Oh, okay, 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 gotcha. Gotcha. This makes sense. Okay, great. Let's look back at uh, your HTML. Uh, and the first thing I would suggest moving is moving that email. So you don't have to you know just to be that straight. So you don't have it right now. But um, so the first thing I would do is put it uh, this is just like that. No. Okay, next thing I would do uh, is uh, throw a uh, This is not serious. Oh, wait, no, It's not this one. 
Uh, anything that's going to be up on the uh, GitHub page is uh, new stuff. Can I put something in front of it? Like, what would create index type? Unfortunately, no. Okay. An index.html is not a special place where it's like when it loads this directory, it's not for index type. So, yeah, it's by directory. Okay. Um, Okay, so we have a short list with a capital uh, and uh, we're building the Java DevJS there. And the one click on sort list. Do you have it? Okay, let's open the map and go to the map console by the new Okay, to open the Google console. Oh, wow. uh, <laughs> uh, not, not fast friends. Command opt I. Command what? Option on I. Huh. Okay, let's see if there's a view button. Is there a view? Oh, okay. Oh, we are probably not in Chrome. We're probably in Safari or whatever your silly default browser is. Yeah. I don't know anything about Safari's developer console. Oh, that's really dumb. I, I think I would suggest being in Chrome instead. I think I would suggest being in Chrome instead, just because I know how Chrome works. Okay, so how do I get this open in Chrome? If you, uh, do you have Chrome installed? Yep. Oh, you do? Oh, great. Um, that makes it easier for Chrome, and now, if you uh, do the. Uh, oh, that's under view. Oh, I know how you're doing. You have to go to developers there. It's under view. Okay, it is on Chrome. Uh, it's not on Safari. Oh. Okay. And go to console. Because consoles were in there. I'm not expecting to see that. I'm not expecting to see Um, it's not even getting into your JavaScript as far as something's not showing up, but uh, it's what it's doing. It's a thing. And so at line 9, I think that's the page. Uh, 
Okay, so anyways, so how do I now um, get this into Okay, great. Um, so uh, I don't want to do it open for a record right now. Um, so let's do a couple things in here. Uh, let's uh, go ahead and push this. Push. 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 Now your GitHub has the updated stuff and it all works beautifully. Yeah. Okay. Um, so now to get this onto uh, pages. Uh, this I go to my Safari because that's where the GitHub is right there. Oh, sure. Yeah, that doesn't matter. Well, I don't know. Right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, work where you do need to uh, do is in the, in the terminal. I'm going to pull up a page where I uh, have these two commands listed. You're going to need to create a new branch called GH Pages. And uh, this is uh, where we were uh, talking about the uh, branches uh, being uh, a copy of all of the, uh, the work there. Uh, so uh, uh, git check it with minus B. I can just start line. typing this again? Do you remember your uh, GitHub username? Um, Excellent. So if you go to uh, uh, jessieleggett.github.io, you get that one. And uh, it's going to work for you, but say slash. Uh, Yeah. 
Can I just copy this? Uh, no, it must be GitHub. Uh, in the, in the <laughs> Not too much beyond that. Um, I suspect it's there and hasn't updated yet, but uh, that's just a suspicion. Sure that it's updated uh, on GitHub. Oh, I think it's just called Project Dot One. Instead of what? No Git. No Git. Oh yeah, I didn't work. Excellent. And there. So now can I just send you this link? Yep. Or should I send you the one to my repository? Both. <laughs> yeah. Do you want me to send mine to, like, I just changed it to mad instead? Yeah. Um, so he here's here's part of the issue. Right? Um, I, I have to grade you on what you said. And uh, you both had one at the uh, at the beginning. It started a class on yeah. For homework? Uh, for homework. Yeah. 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 Um, so uh, uh, for for project, we aren't counting the uh, GitHub pages. So um, that uh, it was on the original assignment uh, and so many people were having issues with it. Right yeah. Now, it off the for, for, for that. Uh, okay. um, uh, in general, uh, when you guys work together and it's to work together. Uh, um, the, I, I guess it's to uh, it just reference any resources you use during the you that you work with. And yeah. uh, so uh, just put it over a comment and that's kind of the way we work together. Uh, I would like you to each have uh, your own stuff. Yeah, sure. your own yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, This one's a little bit more just because you have time. All I really want to do is that I'm sure you guys have now that I use the easy plus box that you use. Thank you. 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 Thank
So it's got to be a good repository that every time you make a big change, you are going to do it. And at some point, you have a creative brain that will be able to hold the rest of it. So it's a very good thing to do it. So it's a very good thing to do it. And so it's a very good thing to do it. And so it's a very good thing to do it. Uh, yeah, I mean, your brother, you know, I think you can help me find files. Yeah. 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 So the only desktop, um, or even people with this, even if I find it is usually easier to write and we just like frequently will come to you guys with that, they would write to you for all the time. So I would just create a new one for the user of the API Um, and so here, you can say, if yeah, you stay at the top of the and then uh, basically, uh, the mm -hmm. So, uh, you can have CD into that, so CD higher than that. So you know that your homework is called home on four layers. But uh, it actually needs to be the uh, Yes. 
And I'm pretty good. So you have it in the gift right now, and uh, then I'm going to pull up that page with the two commands on it that uh, were needed to create a branch. So uh, what we're first going to do is check out, and this checks out from your gift out into the new branch, uh, so get check out minus the So now we ought to be able to uh, open a browser window up and go to the uh, 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 And I said, because every time you make changes, uh, you uh, just do it the uh, No, you make the changes to them and you save it and you go back to Every time you make something, you can put a 
So I usually do when I get a lot of tape, I usually uh and I send it to all the all the different phones you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Thank <laughs> you. 
Oh, oh, sorry. Well, my question was just about, like, so, for kind of this, you know, and you were like, you know, all you have to do is keep it. Yeah, absolutely. And then you don't need to just do that. Uh, you can make them all the change. No, you don't need to do that. Uh, not really. No, there's actually one point. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Beth. It should be, um, and uh, what I'm uh, just not, uh, by this should be available, and uh, you want to get so those are kind of on there, so I'm going to go into the I So that one's not as uh, uh, the number of times that it's going to close you to seven and that's ten. So all your data gets something. And it's being on all of this is in a place on the Um, oh, no.
make sure you're sure you don't know. And see if you don't want to do that. Yeah, go ahead and uh, go ahead and just uh, check if you do it just now. Okay, please let me know how I can help. Boy, this projector is weird. Is it? Apparently, fixed the bulb issue that they're. The, the bulb issue was fixed, but uh, it, uh, it its brightness is so weirdly calibrated that I had to uh, go into a high contrast mode to get anything to be readable. Um, in uh, the normal contrast mode, uh, uh, black text on a white screen just washes out. Yeah. Uh, and I tried playing a little bit with the brightness and uh, just couldn't find something that worked right. And so, high contrast let everybody read the screen, anyways. But. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, no, it was really tough. I mean, fortunately, uh, white text on a black background seems to work okay. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but the black text. And stuff like that gets in the yeah. Right. yeah, totally. All right, well, thanks for letting me know. I'll leave a note for um, Gary. Awesome, thanks so much. Look that.